This lesson is on area and polar coordinates. And this, of course, is something that was not done in AB calculus. So those of you who have taken AB calculus need to work on this very carefully. Some preliminaries. Make sure you know how to state points, graph, and state angle values which create a curve, one of the polar graph curves. You should also know how to go from rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates and back. And this should be in a preliminary lesson or a review for you. The polar graphs that we normally work with are circles, limissons, rose curves, limniscates, and spirals. And we will use many of these in our examples today. So let's go on. Determining the area and polar coordinates. Well, the formula is area is equal to the integral from a to b of 1 half r squared d theta. Where does this come from? If we create a polar curve, something like this, and it can be any type of squiggly graph that is created with an r and a theta, and we just take one portion of this, let's say that portion, and if I break that up into many, many portions or parts, as we do in Riemann sums, and just take one of those parts and look at it, we will see that the area of the sector that we're going to be working with is area is equal to 1 half r squared and some sort of a theta. But in this case, if we don't take our beginning angle to be 0, our theta becomes a delta theta. So when we put the Riemann sum component on this, we will have the Riemann sum formula the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum, sigma, i equals 1 to n of 1 half r sub i squared delta theta sub i, depending on which segment we are on. That equals the integral from a to b of 1 half r squared d theta. And that gave us the formula that we originally had up there. So let's go on and try to do some problem solving with this. Area under one leaf of a rose curve. Given r is equal to 2 cosine 3 theta, determine the area under one leaf. Well, the graph of this has the first leaf sitting on the x-axis because it's cosine and it's two units long. And then because it's 3 theta, we have three leaves. So there's the second leaf. Here's the third leaf. Now the only other thing we need to do is determine what angle it takes for us to complete one graph. Let's go to our calculator and put in our function 2 cosine 3 theta. And our window on this is from 0 to pi, and of course the increments are 0.1 radians, which normally you should have when you are doing these. So let's check this out and see what it graphs like. And sure enough, the worm finished when the graph finished, so pi is a good number for our theta. So let's look at that. So we are going from 0 to pi for theta, and that would give us a whole one. But we only want one leaf, so we really want it to be pi over 3. So it goes from 0 to pi over 3. But we can even be smarter than that and just take one small portion of this, which will be a 0 to pi over 6. So if we do an integral from 0 to pi over 6 of 1 half in front of it, of course, and how many of these do we need? Well, we need two of those to make one leave. And square our r, so we'll have 4 cosine squared 3 theta d theta. Cleaning this up, we get 4, 0 to pi over 6. And remember, cosine squared has an identity which we use when we want to do our integrals by hand, which is 1 half times 1 plus cosine 6 theta d theta. Cleaning this part up and taking the integral, we get 
2 times theta plus 1 sixth sine 6 theta. And we're going to go from 0 to pi over 6. And when we substitute the pi over 6 in, we get a pi over 6 for the theta. When we substitute it in here, we get sine of pi, which is 0. And if we do the zeros in, we get 0. So we really end up with 2 times pi over 6, which is pi over 3 for our answer. So this isn't so bad. The important thing is to know what it takes to draw out or sketch out one whole graph of these, in this case the rose curve. Let's go on to another problem. Determine the area enclosed by the curve r squared is equal to 4 sine 2 theta. Well, this is a lemniscate and looks like this for the sine. Now, what does it take to sketch this one out? Well, if you graph that one on your calculator, you will find that theta is equal to 2 pi. But I'm going to break this one down even further, too, because I am just going to take 1 fourth of that and just go from 0 to 1 fourth of 2 pi, which is pi over 2. And then, of course, I'm going to multiply it by 4. So area is equal to 1 half times 4, because I'm doing the whole curve, times the integral from 0 to pi over 2. Because r is already squared here, we can just put down 4 sine 2 theta and d theta that. And in cleaning all this up, we get 8 times the integral of 0 to pi over 2 of sine 2 theta d theta. Take the integral, we get 8. Integral of sine 2 theta is negative 1 half cosine 2 theta. And we go from 0 to pi over 2. This becomes a negative 4. Cosine of 2 times pi over 2, which is cosine of pi, is negative 1. The cosine of 0 minus 1 again. Or it's plus 1, but it's minus plus 1, of course. And that gives us a negative 2 times a negative 4, which gives an 8 square units. Well, let's go on and do a little bit more difficult type of problem. This time, we are going to determine the area between two curves. So the problem reads, determine the area between the curves inside of r is equal to 2 cosine 2 theta and outside of r is equal to 1. So if we sketch that out, again, we have a rose curve, this time with four leaves. Cosine starts on the x-axis, and the whole distance for that petal is 2. So we have four of those. And then the circle r is equal to 1 is nothing more than a circle with the center of the circle at the origin. So if we just look at a small piece of this, we have the leaf and we have the circle. And they intersect at some point. So first of all, let's find that point of intersection and then decide what we're going to do with it. So in deciding what that intersection is, we make 2 cosine 2 theta equal to 1, or cosine 2 theta is equal to 1 half, or 2 theta is equal to plus or minus pi over 3, or theta is equal to plus or minus pi over 6, which means this is negative pi over 6, and that's positive pi over 6. And the area we want is this region up in there. So let's manipulate this a little bit and say area is equal to 1 half. And we want this to go from 0 to pi over 6. Always use that 0 when you can. And now how many of these little intervals do we have? Well, we have actually eight of them, two for each petal, four petals. And then we have 2 cosine 2 theta quantity squared, because the region that we're taking is just the region inside of the 2 cosine 2 theta, and d theta that. And this is equal to 4 times 1.913, and that's equal to 7.652 square units. So again, let's look at this, find the points of intersection look at the area that you need to find. And in this case, it was only the area inside that curve, r is equal to 2 cosine 2 theta. And that's the one we used. Our last example is even more complicated. Determine the area when r is equal to 5 sine theta and r is equal to 2 plus 2 sine theta overlap. 
So what does that area look like? Well, r is equal to 5 sine theta is a circle that goes up and is 5 units in diameter. r is equal to 2 plus 2 sine theta is our cardioid and looks like this. It only goes up 4 units, so it is lower than the circle. The area that we are looking for is where they overlap, which is in here. But what we need to do again is break these two areas up because we have one that's coming from the sine and the other one that's coming from the cardioid. So let's just focus in on that. This area is coming from the sine, and of course there's another area on the other side equal to that, so whatever we do, we're just gonna double. And then the other area comes from the cardioid. So we're gonna have to add two areas together. So our area, is equal to 1 half, and let's double that now, times the integral. Where do they intersect? So again, we have to set the two equations equal to each other. So 5 sine theta is equal to 2 plus 2 sine theta, or 3 sine theta is equal to 2, or sine theta is equal to 2 thirds. And we find out that theta is equal to not an exact value for this one, of course, so it's 0 0.7297. So our first interval is from 0 to 0 0.7297. And we, again, are using the circle for this. So we will put 5 sine theta squared d theta for that one. And we will add to that 1 half times 2 and go from 0 0.7297 to where that one ends, which is pi over 2. And this time use the cardioid 2 plus 2 sine theta quantity squared d theta. And we do have to do this one on our calculator at some point, so why not just stick it in and do it all at once? And eventually you will get an approximate answer of 14.913 square units. Again, on these, where the areas intersect for two curves, make sure you find that point of intersection and note which areas you need either to add together or just use by itself. This concludes your lesson on area and polar curves.